So today, for the because we finish off at one o'clock today, um, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to look at some innovative new businesses, which will be in the second half. And then this morning, we're going to talk about AI. Right? Not that we haven't even talked about it already. It's been actually integrated in all these conversations. But I thought, let's have a bit of a focus session. So after me, I'm going to have Steve Brandish come up from Property Mate, who's going to talk about using AI to change the way consumers uh, search for real estate. And then uh, Devor, who presented last year, but is knee deep all day, every day, been doing AI stuff for years, is going to give a literally up-to-date view of what's happening and how AI can offer property marketplaces um, and how they can implement it. What are the ways in which they can do it? But what I thought I would do this morning is kick off with a presentation. If you could bring it up, guys, please. Thank you very much. And down here would be useful. Okay. Thank you. And I was been reflecting you know, on, on how people engage with marketplaces. And I was thinking forever and a day, it's always been the same way. But should it always be that way in the future? And are we truly meeting the needs of the market? And if we're not meeting the needs of the market, are we missing opportunities to build trust, generate more leads, and get greater engagement with our audience? So we're going to talk about from search to tell. Now, the funny thing is I wrote this way before anyone else did any of their presentations, and then lo and behold, some people nicked some slides. All right, or maybe I stole their slides, or it's subconsciously we're all thinking about the same issue, just different ways. So really we start off with a premise that is very hard to disagree with, that there's not really been a lot of change in the last 10 to 20 years. Okay? I had this slide, Malcolm had the identical slide, except he had from 2003, so I thought, forget that. Let's actually have a look at, it still isn't different, here we've got... Yeah, the RAA group, Mimo Scout 24, I picked Spidigados out of Greece, Zillow, it doesn't matter. Search is always starting with a point that you actually know where you want to go. That's great if you know where you want to go. But it's not great if you actually don't know as much as you need to know to find a place to live. So that's the first problem why things, I think, are a little bit broken. Secondly, portals continue to remain reliant on the same revenue streams from the same customers as they have over the last decade. In fact, you can go back even further and see the same numbers. The way to read this chart is on the left-hand side is right move. The right-hand side is the realestate.com.au, so the Australian revenues of the REA group. The blue bar is revenue, advertising and display, or classifies revenue, from agents and developers. You keep just milking the same customer base to capture the value. And it's been very hard to build other revenue streams over what has been a long period of time. Nothing's changed in that process. And of course, the market leaders haven't changed, except their logos have. Well, except Idealista. Okay? They lost the dot com. Hasn't changed since 2003. So as innovative as this industry is, and having run 39 of these conferences and thousands of discussions and conversations and presentations around a whole lot of stuff, many things are still the same in what's happening. Okay? So why? Why is this the case? Why have things not really changed? Well, for 20 more years, was, was it 30 years Sellers Year just celebrated? their birthday? I mean, that's a long time, right? But what we've successfully done in that period of time is educate our audience. This is how you search. No longer use the newspaper, use a portal site. This is the way you use it. And we educate, we educate, we educate. We educate the advertisers. This is how you advertise. You buy a package, you buy a listing, you pay a bit extra, you go further up the search, you have some bigger ads. You maybe have some more images, some virtual tours, whatever it is. That's the core of what, is, what has been done. The business model is super settled. 
advertisers pay, they get leads. And the loop goes around. In many markets, the agents and developers don't actually have a lot of choice. Not because there's not a lot of portals they can advertise on, it's because their customer, the seller, the landlord, expects them to be advertising on the REAs, the MO Scouts, the right moves, and so on. The ecosystem is a nice little system that works. Markets consolidated, we've seen businesses buy. Zoopla was the great example when it bought up um, uh, Property Finder, which you know, we used to own, Finder Property, Prime Location, and a few other bits and pieces. Was well, consolidation, consolidation, strong EBITDA. Well, if you've got strong EBITDA, do you really need to change so much? Okay. Revenue growth price increase. We've talked about this. Okay? Most of the price increases have been done by the 10, 15, 20% price increase every year. Pull the lever. Because of all the other reasons, you make money. Okay? And customers, the advertisers, often value just lead volume. Just give me more leads. Because they don't really understand the quality of what's in there. But I think the real issue is fear of upsetting the status quo. It's working. Don't poke the bear. Don't get it wrong. If we're going to change, we're going to tinker around the edges. Hopefully, we'll find something good. However, market fundamentals are changing. Right? It's not like the world is just going to stand still. Things are changing. I thought this was a very interesting um, analysis done by YouGov and Oracle in the United Kingdom a month ago. No, July, two months ago now. And they asked, uh, I've got the raw numbers, as like 3,000 odd people, about what's your most trusted source of real estate information? Okay, on the left hand side, portals are the most trusted source. So for those who are older than 25, 44%, 43%, doesn't matter, right? It actually drops down to the 55 year olds because they still love real estate agents, it's the most trusted source. But look at the first bar, the 18 to 24 year olds. They're not going fantastic, I trust these portals. The right moves, the Zooplas, the uh, spotter homes, or whatever it is they're looking for as the most trusted source. What they're saying, which is on the right hand side, I like other people's views, recommendations. What are my friends telling me? Where should I look? And we heard that the other day from, I can't remember who now, right? Um, about images, uh, recommendations from friends. 16% of 18 to 24 year olds see that as the most important source of information. Okay? Whether it's 10% and 8% for the older age groups. This is a bit of a problem. If this follows through, if we can't build trust with that generation, because guess what? They get older. They're the ones that are going to be the prime consumers of your product in 10 years time. And there are more and more options to f look for listings. Yeah, lo and behold, okay? Portal sites, agent developer sites, the vertical search, the matulas of the world, and social media. You can start, you can basically find listings everywhere. Okay, when we were at Matula, when I was at Matula, you're finding the same listing 10 times from different sources, from the agent sites or the multiple agent sites and from portals and so on. So you don't have a monopoly on where the listings are coming from. Advertisers will want more and more value for their spend because you can't keep squeezing the lemon and getting more value out of it, okay? How do you read the chart? And this is similar to what Malcolm did, so I'll be quick and brief around this one. See, we did this separately and we get similar information, okay? Between 2013 and 2023, so a 10-year period of time, 132% increase in the ARPA, the average revenue per advertiser, okay, from 600 and whatever to 1,400 per month. Okay, these numbers are up to date as of the first half of the 2023 year. In the same period of time, there's been a 70% growth in leads generated. So it's not like they've grown 132% in leads and it's like a one for one ratio. No, you're just paying more for the lead over time. And then, when you do the maths, and I had slightly different numbers from Malcolm, but the message is still fundamentally the same, around 8% of an agent's income 
in the United Kingdom goes to Rightmove. Well, you can't keep squeezing and squeezing and squeezing and getting that more and more and more. You've got to think about doing stuff differently. Okay? And of course, AI. AI is here. It's not going to go away. We've, there's differences on how much it's going to impact, and that's something that we will discover over time. Okay? But I think there's two things that, are, that it's actually going to change. One is how we do things, how it's integrated into our businesses. Okay? Whether it's around enhancing the quality of listings, improve all aspects of the customer interaction. But it will, over time, educate our consumers that there is a different way to search. I'm no longer stuck with, I need to know the suburb, I need to know the price, I need to go search. I want to ask a long question. I want to engage in a conversation. I want to do something differently. Okay? So what can marketplaces do around this? Okay? When I'm sitting down, it was actually one o'clock this morning when I thought, oh, I might add this slide. Okay? It's amazing what some tinted Verano does. I'm thinking, well, there's business as usual. Right? I'm just going to do price increases, some new ad products, I'm going to buy more traffic. Why not, right? It's worked for a long period of time. Consolidate. We had Andy yesterday talking about looking at the industry, lots of opportunities for consolidation. Let's consolidate. Buy competitors, we'll extract value by pulling out the costs, but it's going to be business as usual because I'll have the market power. Perhaps I'm just delaying the inevitable. Vertically integrate. We've spoken so many times in all these conferences, transactions, CRMs, mortgages, insurance, moving into ancillary products and services. And what we've seen is that, yeah, you can get some progress in that. Uh, I think Ed yesterday was talking about how some of that's plateauing. If you look at the stats from Scout24, about 14% of their revenue comes from what I'll call non-traditional sources. But last year, it was 14% as well. So it's not suddenly replacing everything. Or you can deliver greater value. I missed a word. See, one o'clock in the morning. Greater value to users through better search, better engagement, and higher quality leads. Okay? So I thought, well, I'm just going to focus on this one. Because to me, that's the one that we've got to solve. Okay? We can't just sit back and not do it. So then I was thinking, well, how, do, how is one way to think about this? And the reality is there are many ways to think about it. So this is a perspective. And the way I think about it is I want to go from search to personalize, to discover, to tell. Okay? So watch search. Search is I'm going to ask you a request and you're going to give me everything that meets the request. Thank you. Status quo. Personalize is, I'm going to ask you a question, you're going to give back to me information, but based on what you know about me, which will be different to what you know about Malcolm, right? For the same search, okay? Discover is, you're going to tell me things I don't know. Help me find something new, interesting, that meets my needs. And finally, because I've got a 19, 20, and 21-year-old, who don't have patience to do any of the first three, they just want to be told. I've got to go. My daughter is uh, 19. She's studying at ESCP in Paris, trying to find an apartment there. Challenging. All we wanted was four months, Paris, this price range, this distance to the school. Tell me what's available today. Please let me book. Six weeks of stuffing around, we found somewhere, okay? So I think tell is where we might eventually go over time. Why is all this important? Because the more you go from left to right, the more you become the most relevant and trusted source of listings for consumers and produce more highly convertible leads for the advertisers builds onto the theme we've had in the conference around trust and relevance. So let's dive into this. Search. It's what we're doing now, but there's still innovation around this. And a lot of you guys are doing a lot of this stuff, so I'm just going to fly through with examples, interesting examples from now on. Okay? It's not just sort of theory. Okay? 
Let's have some practical stuff. Allow me to search around things that are more interesting to me, specific locations, school catchment areas, train stations, relevant points of interest. Allow consumers to specify their own search areas. Okay? A lot of this stuff is like, yeah, of course, but a lot of people don't do it. I know, I just play around on sites for a couple of hours and you can see the variation in how people approach it. Allow consumers to develop their own search requests. Increase filtering options, better listing presentation. Why? Just give them more refined search, something that better meets their needs. Because remember, there's what, 150 people in the room today? There's 150 different needs for a similar search. Because we've got different requirements, different personal issues that need to be solved. And make it easy for the consumer to generate higher quality leads. Search by location, Foxtons is doing this really well around school catchment areas, because in the United Kingdom, school catchment areas are very important. You want to make sure that you're in the zone so your kid can go to the right school, not outside the zone so your kid goes to the wrong school. Probably not relevant in Australia, but relevant in the United Kingdom. And by the way, this is not a portal, this is an agency doing this. The other thing, the agents are getting much, much better at doing all this sort of stuff. Metro stops, this is from Property Guru. Well, Singapore, transit, very important to get from A to B. Just show me everything around this train station. Thank you very much. That meets my requirements. Tokyo, great example of where you need to do this sort of stuff because travel times are critical. And you go, I tried to do Keizo, your site, but I don't read Japanese, sorry, um, around it. But it looked really cool. Um, User-defined search, here's the Imo web. Just randomly draw the areas that are super important to you. Because you know the area, okay? Free form, polygon search, and so on, okay? Um, free text searches, okay? This is 99 acres. So here's the example where instead of having to search by a specific location, I can now put in here farmhouse in Punjab, Punjab below one crore. It gives the results. It's not personalized yet, but it does give me results. So no longer am I stuck in that world of, I've got to know the, the, the area in Punjab that I need to go to and then filter, 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 filter. Okay? And now people are starting to get, try to go the next level, natural language, freeform search. This is out of uh, Brazil, a company called Bell.vc. Okay? Very early stage, but it's taking now that GPT freeform search. Type in whatever you want. It will interpret it. And out of that it then filters back into the traditional search we talk about. So what we're doing here is we're basically still in that world of search. Okay? Image-led search. Someone mentioned yesterday, are you now, can you take a picture of the sort of house you like and just give me everything that looks like that? Here's an example of one home that does it. Take a photo of the house you want or upload the image. It'll now find everything that looks like that. And you can filter again. None of it's personalized though. Partially personalized, but still a search. Okay? Now, the other part I wanted to throw in here is the use of AI to interrogate images to then create everything out the back end. Yeah, we all know about using AI, you know, ChatGPT to generate main descriptions. That's been done, used now for, well, there's, there's been historically um, purpose-built programs to do it, and now AI is doing it. But these guys have gone that next step, upload five images, everything gets produced. The main description, but also the social media descriptions to promote the house. You don't have to do anything, right, except take images, and away you go. But also, it interrogates the pictures and gives you better fielded data. Because otherwise, you're just reliant on the agent to put in, tick the right boxes or put in the right search fields. Okay, personalize is um, driven by understanding the consumer. Okay, the marketplace learns more by profiling the consumer through a combination of what you do on the site, what you say about yourself, and who you are. The more I learn about you as an individual, the more I can personalize the results. The more I personalize the results, the more you're going to be engaged. The more you're engaged, the more you've got trust. The more you've got trust, the more you're going to give more information about yourself to get a better outcome. Okay? Um, I'm not going to talk much about what Property Mate's doing because Steve's up next. Okay? Um, but they're using the 
the Tinder-like approach. You're looking at images because we're all image-based people. Swipe left, swipe right. Now, based on why I'm swiping, it starts to interrogate your choices to work out what is it that you liked, what was consistent, so the next images I keep feeding you become more and more refined in that journey. Okay? AI-powered chatbots can collect more and more information. This is List Assist plugged into a Remax office in the United States, um, and it's just asking questions, right, and engaging the conversation, okay? Now, but it does more than just engage in the conversation. What it then does is it then starts to pull out the right images that as a result of the conversation. Now, it's personalizing the results because what Malcolm wants, what I want, for the same st fundamental starting point will be very different as a destination point, okay? This is um, what um, PropTex is doing about getting better engagement. This is the actual presentation that um, Josh tried to do yesterday, but I think it's actually pretty cool because what it's showing is that I can look at an image. And historically, it's just been static. Look at them, look, you know, 10, 20, 30 images. How many, how many can you give me? Now I've got to try to visualize myself living in that property. What he's doing here is they're saying, let's grab the images, open a free chat, free form, chat, enter what you want, this case, Ikea stuff, etc. And what will happen is it will populate the room with that sort of furniture. You can now get a feeling what it's like to live in there. And what they can also do is take photos, take your property, so your furniture from your property, and shove them into existing property. Now you're getting engaged. Better engagement, better trust, better trust, better quality outcomes. Discover. Well, help me find what I don't know. Because the problem is I don't know what I don't know. So help me find it. Smart, uh, search smartly out of the United Kingdom. Lifestyle search, going from left to right, okay? Basic essentials, beds, baths, what you're looking for. Ideal commute time if you know it. What's important to you about living and when do you need to move? All the basic bits of information. Now, I'll start to present to you properties that meet those requirements. And lo and behold, you get a weird ass map. And probably in areas like Subtle or whatever it is that you've never thought of that could have met your criteria. Help me discover new places. We talked about travel time yesterday, so I'm not going to dwell on that, okay? But it gives you different ways of thinking about the outcome. We talked about Bayut yesterday, engaging in a conversation. I asked the question here, uh, something around, um, uh, show me uh, top three areas to live in Dubai if I have kids under the age of whatever and whatever. I don't know. It engages me in a conversation. I can now refine. It's helping me discover what I just don't know before. Then it's about linking this to the search, and before you know it, you've allowed me to engage in the product in a different way. Finally, tell. What is tell? Tell's about saying, look, you know so much about me. I don't, I'm time poor. Tell me the best two or three options for what I need. It goes back to a chart that Jonathan showed. Um, you know, hey, Alexa, how's my property search going? It's about outsourcing the drudge work. And if you think about it, and I remember it was REA, people used to, you know, the peak time for usage was like one o'clock and they're in the office. And you know that they're coming back day after day after day to scroll through the same listings, to sift through, to find the one or two that they hadn't seen. How do you simplify that whole process for what is fundamentally becoming a time poor or perceived time poor generation? And, it, and, and they're starting to emerge these sort of examples. The example, the realist guys who are here, um, at the conference, they're using AI to identify the top 1% of investment properties. Okay, you, what's another form of search, right? I want to look at properties in Dubai for investment, and I want to understand the yield return. Now, I can do the old way, search, search the rentals, try to match the two, have a big spreadsheet, try to work out, yeah, three bedroom, two bathroom apartment, dot, 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 this is the yield and away I go. They do it, and what they return to you are the top five, ten properties that meet your requirements. They are investable based on your requirements. Click here, and away we go. That's tell, right? I don't see the other 99% of the market. I'm not searching through the drudge. 
So really, why is this important? Your market conditions are changing. Okay? Whether you like it or not, they're changing. Okay? Not all consumers are the same. I think that's probably the most important point. Um, I was at an Aviv conference a few weeks ago, and they had the voice of our customer around, and they had all these boards up, uh, and there were just different little stories about their various customers. And when I was reading them, I was reflecting, like, well, every customer is actually different. Someone's moving for a divorce, someone's getting married, someone's having kids, new job, everyone's got different requirements. So why are we taking all these bloody different requirements and shoving them in the same machine and expecting happy customers out the other end? It's not really a customer-centric world, is it? Okay? It's a world about us. So we've got to give them choice on how they engage. Create, what's this going to do? Create more trust. And higher value for everyone, perceived value. Okay? I'm a happier customer, I'm going to keep going and use right move, sell a share, whatever. I'm going to generate better quality leads because I'm going to more likely to close. The agents are happier. Monetization will naturally flow. I think often we put monetization at the top and try to shove everything into that and make it work. Brute force. Maybe it's time to start to think about this in a different way. So, food for thought, a different perspective on marketplace search. It's going to wrap up with this last minute of thought. Okay? Today, property marketplace is all about driving traffic to their world. Everything about search engines, brand marking, apps, vertical search, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't matter, right? You're put into my world. And in my world, you play with my rules, you engage in my way, you fill out my forms, you fill out, you do search my way, you filter my way. Okay, you come to me, come to me, and I'll generate leads out the back end. Clearly that works well when the industry is emerging, when it's establishing itself. Okay, and it works now because a lot of these portals have consolidated the market of listings. But perhaps it's time to think about it differently. On two, one is go to them. Allow me to consume the proposition the way I want to, on Facebook, on a WhatsApp chat, on Instagram, or on your site. The two is, what does it mean for brand? Does the brand equal fine property, or does the brand equal an amazing search and discovery experience that's trustworthy, reliable, comprehensive, and can be consumed anywhere? So wherever I see the brand, I'll take Selegere as an example, I know I can click and engage, I'm going to have the same Seamless experience. So that's the food for thought I had today. I don't think anything else around this. Um, if you've got any questions, I now switch roles. I've got a question myself. So Simon, what do you think about? Okay. But if you bring up some questions. So, that, so I hope that was interesting. Bit of food for thought to start a Monday, so where are you, Friday. That's even scary for me. Okay. Um, with your parents' example, I feel like the tell would not address the issue of the agent with Tell, it's about the end-to-end -end process, okay? AI should, be, AI should have done the work for me of making sure every apartment was available, had all the right facilities, everything needed, so that when the Tell comes back, I just go, yep, I like that one, done, I've booked it, here's my credit card deposit, thank you very much, okay? With it. Um, if you had a pick of two or three um, no-brainer areas where portals should engage with AI, what should they be? Quality of listings, okay? Make sure you just got high quality, real listings, um, well, well thought through um, information about the listing because that's the moment engagement. People are still landing there. So make sure that that is really good. Um, I think the second is using AI to engage with me, just to discover more about who I am. And I thought when, when um, Ben from uh, um, Zoopla was talking yesterday about capturing information about the individual into their database is very important. Every one of those little moments, those little tags that they can put against me helps them personalize the result later. So engage with me in a conversation. So if I'm dwelling on a property, have a little box pop up. 
hey, Simon, hopefully it knows who I am. I see you're spending some time on this property. Do you want any more information? Okay. Well, is it near a park or whatever? Now, you're, now I've told her I said park. Oh, important to Simon, right? And so on. Little things like that. And of course, the chat bot, which is really AI powered, is now engaging. Well, let me, then the next thing is she'll say, great, well, let me show you three more properties that I think are going to be a better for you. Isn't that what an agent does in reality? I go to an agent, I go to an inspection, or I pick up the phone, and then, oh, I've got three more like that, because all they're doing is asking you questions to qualify you as a customer to then provide you with more listings, right, that they've got. The problem is they've never got all the listings in the market. Okay? Um, how long do you think portals will take to go from search to tell? The answer is some will never. Okay? Some will be market either market dominant position or have no real felt need to do it. Or they'll have economic pressures on them not to. Others will go there uh, much faster. And, you, and I showed you with the, the realist example. And there's, there's the others. I think in reality it's going to happen faster in the, the rental space because the generation that's engaging with that are, tend to be younger, and they are going to have less patience. They have less patience. I can tell you they have no patience on the planet, okay? Um, tell agents, uh, tell aren't agents better positioned than portals to do it? Uh, they have all the experience. Oh, I, no. No, and, and, and let me tell you what. I think the fundamental, if I'm a salesperson, Okay? and I am working in real estate agency, and I'm on commission, what's the most important thing to me? Getting a sale. Right? Now, the problem is sometimes tell requires trust. Sometimes those two don't work together because trust takes time to build. You don't start trusted, you've got to build the trust. I think the portals are a better position because they can build the trust over time, and then they can move progressively from personalizing, hey, did you think about the conversation, okay? Malcolm starts his search. Um, oh, Malcolm, what, have you, you know, what are the things you're looking for? Oh, park, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now I'm personalizing my results. Hey, did you also know that there's this other suburb nearby? Similar sort of houses, similar sort of requirements. So I'm walking him through the process. Ah, oh, well, Malcolm, look, based on everything you've told me, here are three that I think are absolutely what you should, ex you should go and visit, and by the way, I can book you in, imagine having all this done for you, and I can book you in next Saturday at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 12 a.m., here's the route, just turn up. Someone will meet you at the door of each of them. Can't that all be AI-driven? Do I need to actually talk to a real estate agent? Okay? And when I, talk, when I meet them at the door, it might be the agent. Hopefully it's someone who's going to show me and not waste my time. Okay? But that's taking them on the journey from search to tell in that process. Um, uh, I think I've answered most of these. What have I got? I, I've got to see if I've got any more questions here because I haven't, I haven't edited myself while I'm going. That's the problem. Um, uh, yep, that'll do because it says time up here. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that was interesting for you.